Cuckoo clocks. The Black Forest region of southwest Germany is world famous for its cuckoo clocks, which have either one day or eight day movements, meaning that's how long they run on one winding. The standard feature is a little bird that emerges and cuckoos when the clock strikes. Some clocks also play music and have moving figures. The intricate carvings that decorate many cuckoo clocks start out as a block of linden, a soft wood that's easy to carve. An artisan first outlines the basic shape using a stencil and paint, then cuts it out with a jigsaw. Here he's cutting three blocks at once. To steady the piece, he mallets it to nails protruding from a block of wood. Then he begins carving, using up to 50 different knives to sculpt exceptionally fine detail. The clock cases these carvings decorate are made of pine or plywood, depending on the model. Often a case has no carving at all. Instead, an artist paints an elaborate design. Some cases feature a combination of painting and carving. The technical artistry is on the inside. The clock's brain, called the movement, is a system of brass and steel gears. It keeps time and triggers the cuckoo function. The components and configuration vary according to whether it's a one-day or eight-day movement. Workers sandwich the movement between two brass plates, connecting them at the corners with long screws. Then on the outside, they install the mechanism that times the chime. Next, the steel wire on which the cuckoo bird will perch. Then last but not least, the reels that will move the clock hands. The factory runs every finished movement for two days straight to ensure it functions perfectly. The first part that goes on the clock case is the dial. They tack it with tiny nails. Next, the wooden cuckoo bird. They insert the movement's perch wire through a hole in his foot, then secure it with a screw so he doesn't fly off. After trimming his tail so he'll fit, they screw the movement, bird and all, inside the case. Next, the steel wires that operate the components that produce the cuckoo sound. We'll see them shortly. And finally, the dial's wooden hands. Every cuckoo clock has two chains that regulate the speed at which the movement gears turn. As we see here in slow motion, an automated machine makes these chains one link at a time by first cutting, then bending pieces of brass wire. Each chain goes into the case through a hole in the bottom, then onto a wheel in the movement, then back out through another hole in the bottom of the case. S-hooks go onto the ends. These will hold cast iron weights that pull the chain. Workers rig up a small wire connecting the bird and the door. This opens the door when he comes out to cuckoo. As this demonstration shows, the bird's cuckoo is actually the sound of air pumping in and out of two miniature bellows. Before each cuckoo, the hammer on the end of this steel wire hits a tiny gong. The number of gong cuckoos indicates the hour. After connecting the bellows to the movement, there's just one step left, running a wire from the movement through the bottom for the pendulum. The technical choreography can now begin. Winding up the clock raises the chain, pulling up the weight on the end. As the weight falls back down gradually, it pulls the chain which turns the movement, which drives the hands of the clock. The pendulum regulates the pace. At this factory, a clock gets the seal of approval only after a two-day test run during which it must perform impeccably. It's this attention to detail, both artistic and technical, that makes these traditional German cuckoo clocks such timeless treasures. <laughs>